This is News 8 This Morning. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being up with 8 here at 6 a.m. on this Thursday, inching closer to that weekend here, Stella. Yes, uh, thank you so much for waking up with us. Uh, I love it when you say it's Thursday, because, you know, <laughs> Friday yeah. is tomorrow. One more day to go here. Uh, again, thank you so much for waking up with us. Let's get right into our top headlines. We begin with this. You know, we're seeing more and more young adults getting coronavirus now and ending up in the hospitals because of it. Even younger patients face health risks. This comes as the CDC has a new warning about the coming months. News 8's Netta Rompor is live along the Embarcadero to break it all down with us. Good morning, Netta. Yeah, good morning. So county officials had their latest update and they did say that their concern is among younger people, specifically the age group in the 20s. Uh, but right now, the median age for coronavirus cases in San Diego County is 38 years old, but they're seeing that increase among younger people. Even hospitalizations are increasing among younger people. A lot of this associated with the reopening of restaurants and bars and many other businesses. So let's break down the latest numbers coming in from San Diego County. Uh, they did say the number of positive cases skyrocketing between the ages of 20 to 49 years old. They now make up 58% of all cases, but 25% of that would be with among people in their 20s. And there are four new community outbreaks they just reported, which brings our seven day total up to 14. And those latest community outbreaks in a laboratory, a hair salon, a barber shop, and a restaurant bar. And right now, 147 of every 100,000 San Diegans are are testing positive for COVID-19 and that's well above the state's criteria of 100 for every 100,000. It's also the highest daily rate since the pandemic began. So Dr. Eisman, who spoke during the county's uh, update yesterday, points out that many younger people equate contracting coronavirus with getting the flu. They may not be taking it as seriously or thinking that they'll be fine if they do in fact get it, but he wants to point out they're seeing a lot more complications with COVID-19. This goes beyond respiratory or lung issues. People are having Having cardiac problems, strokes, blood clots, things like that, even problems with their kidneys and their liver. When you're in your 20s, you think of yourself as being invincible. But the complications of this illness are far greater, they're much longer lasting, and they're far more serious. And also a dire warning this morning from the director of the CDC offering a bleak outlook for the coming months as this pandemic goes on with no vaccine and then the flu season ramping up. So of course that typically happens in the fall and the winter. So he is saying the fall and winter of 2020 and 2021 are going to probably be the most difficult times that we've experienced in American public health. Again, that's coming from the director of the CDC. He says we're already seeing a strain on hospitals nationwide wide so then you add the flu to it and that could cause some real problems here across the country and that's the latest live here at the county administration building we'll send it back to you all right Netta, thank you if you wanted to get tested for coronavirus starting today you'll be able to get tested for covid19 and an additional right aid stores throughout san diego those locations are in alpine fallbrook lemon grove oceanside and valley center testing will be by appointment for anyone 18 years or older and you do not need to be experiencing symptoms. Rite Aid says results are expected within five days. Another testing site will also be opening in the South Bay. County Supervisor Greg Cox will open a drive-up testing site in Imperial Beach today. You'll find it in the parking lot at Mar Vista High School. It opens at 1030 this morning. The site will offer up to 185 appointments a day. It joins five other South County testing sites in San Isidro, Chula Vista, and National City. We have a list of all the places we mentioned at CBS8.com. Horse racing in Del Mar has been called off this weekend after 15 jockeys tested positive for COVID-19. The jockeys are now in isolation, but county health officials say others may have been infected. Yet officials are allowing racing to resume the following Friday, June 24th. That is 10 days from Tuesday when they tested positive. Officials say they possibly came into contact with two jockeys who tested positive while riding at the Los Alamitos racetrack in Orange County last weekend. But if it weren't for the test, one rider tells us he'd never suspect he even had the virus at all. And now to your morning rush, Poway Parks now open to be used by places of worship and gyms. Mayor Steve Voss proposed the SOS or Sharing Outdoor Spaces initiative as a way to help organizations stay afloat. The City Council approved the measure yesterday. It will stay in effect until the county is off the state's watch list and state restrictions are lifted. 
The measure only applies to Poway-based organizations. And the city of San Diego is looking to also open its parks to businesses and organizations impacted by restrictions. Council member Chris Kate introduced a new proposal that would let businesses operate in the outdoor space. He instructed city staff to evaluate the feasibility of the plan as the city has more than 400 parks that could be used. Kate cited the mayor's plan to expand dining outdoors as a possible precursor to the move. Leaders in Chula Vista will give an update today on how they plan to help small businesses in the city. Mayor Mary Casillas Salas is holding a media conference later this morning to discuss this further. Grants are now available for Chula Vista businesses with 10 employees or fewer that have remained closed for over a 60 day period. Those businesses are eligible to receive free permits to expand services outdoor. And we are tracking the fire that started on board the USS Bonham Richard. It's been burning since Sunday morning. Last night, the ship and pier were evacuated after a shift in the ship's position. All those living nearby are advised to stay indoors as much as possible and continue to wear masks to avoid the smoke. The Port of San Diego is offering hotel vouchers to help families impacted by this. In order to qualify, individuals must live in certain zip codes. The information is on your screen here. Priority will be given to those with respiratory problems. You can call 211 this afternoon to learn more. And now to the very latest on the coronavirus numbers. There is now 559 new cases reported in San Diego County out of more than 8,400 tests. That's a positive rate of 6.6%, just above the 14-day rolling average. Now, the total number of cases is now at 21,446, with 12 new deaths, bringing the total to 448 people. And to help curb the spread, a new and second round of business shutdowns are in effect. News 8's Brandon Lewis takes us beyond the numbers to show if the first round had an effect and why it may take more than three weeks to reopen again. It's a little more than a week after the first state required shutdowns and we're starting to see some improvement on our coronavirus numbers, but by no means are we out of the woods. Monday to Monday, total cases increased nearly 19% countywide compared to 24% a week before, but our percentage of cases relative to the test performed or percentage positive hasn't dropped below 3% in nearly a month. Cases are increasing faster in Coronado, Poway and Valley Center, more than double the county average. Although I know it's tough to avoid being out among everybody, it's much tougher to contract the illness potentially and potentially fatal. As in past weeks, the median age of cases continues getting younger as people, especially those younger than 40, frequent businesses that are still open. They are more likely to survive coronavirus, but may still suffer lifelong ailments. It is not just limited to the lung. It causes neurologic disorder. And those complications may be much longer lasting than people have recognized. We don't really know at this point exactly how this will play out because the disease is too new. Initially, a few industries were supposed to stay closed for three weeks. Then the state added indoor gyms, churches, salons, malls, and non-essential offices to the list starting Wednesday. The state is looking closely at this chart. It's a bit of a complicated formula, but we need the case rate to get below 100 to think about reopening. The county says for now, all reopening timelines are suspended as they encourage people to continue distancing and wearing masks. It's not three weeks now. It's just basically uh, the assessment will be made and the state will determine uh, when uh, businesses will reopen. So we, if people adhere to those strategies, we can get back faster. Brandon Lewis, News 8. Well, this is an especially challenging time for families in need during the pandemic, and we want to make sure our kids are fed throughout the summer break. We are proud to host eight schools out hunger, not COVID-19 summer food drive. News 8's Chris Crow is live outside the bonds in Sarah Mesa with how you can make a difference today. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Stella, and we're right here at the Bonds on Murphy Canyon Road where they are collecting in person and safely non-perishable food items to go to this campaign to help feed children and their families here when school is out because they normally rely on those school lunches uh, and school free meals. And joining us right now, one of the community partners in helping put this all together, Allison with SDG&E. And Allison, obviously SDG&E is such a huge part of Schools Out, Hunger's Not. Um, 
So tell us why it is such a big part of sdg &E's mission. And you know, we've been such a long-standing partner with the food bank. We've been supporting them for years. So when they came to us and told us about the modified plan they had on how they were going to reach communities that were impacted by this pandemic, we absolutely wanted to be with them, stand behind them, give them the resources they needed to reach those hard reach communities. And they're doing a great job. So we're really looking forward to today, seeing how the turnout happens, um, and encourage everybody to come to Vons and make their donation. A lot of things have had to change, but everybody has seemingly stepped up, right? Right, and us too. You know, we took a look at how our giving was handled, um, what organizations we needed to partner with that were um, making those impacts in the communities during this time. And so we want to stand behind those. We, we support their mission so that they can reach those um, communities that need it the most. All right, well, thank you so much, Allison. And, and Rich Hopkins here with Bonds and Albertsons. Rich, obviously, Bonds and Albertsons, another big player in, in all of this. And Rich, how can people best donate? What is kind of the best way for them to help out in this campaign. Okay, so in prior years, we, we had done the bags, the pre-packed bags. We're not doing that this year. We made it real simple. So really just keep an eye out for the big red barrels. Um, we have a list of items that you could buy on the red barrels. Um, rice, beans, canned fruit, canned vegetables, tuna, cereal. Um, look for that. Pop it in the barrel. We'll be doing it through the month of July at all of our Albertsons and Vaughn stores in San Diego. I'm looking forward to a really big month. What are the best items for people to be on the lookout when maybe just their shop for themselves to grab maybe a little bit extra to go ahead and drop in that bin. Yeah, as you're shopping, just go ahead and grab some extra pasta sauce, some beans, some rice, and uh, throw it in the barrel. Uh, San Diego always comes through, um, especially here at this location on Murphy Canyon. Um, we'll be looking forward to some big barrels. We'll make sure the food bank uh, uh, gets those as soon as you drop them in. We're collecting at all Vons and Albertsons locations across the county, right? That's right. All right, well, Rich, thank you so much for joining us this, uh, today. I was about to say this evening, just because it's a little bit dark outside, but it is very much in the morning right now. Uh, we were just talking about nighttime and sleep habits, which obviously I don't get enough of here. So again, guys, we're here at the Vons uh, on Murphy Canyon Road, but every Vons and Albertsons throughout San Diego County taking part in Schools Out Hunger is Not. You can go to our website, cbs8.com, and click on the story link to find out how you can help again. Eric Stella. Let's make sure no child goes hungry. Chris, thank you for that. A local company is making progress toward a possible COVID-19 vaccine. We'll tell you more about what they found in their latest testing. Plus, one local school opens their doors today, and while other districts make announcements about the new school year, what does reopening actually look like? We're going to go inside a school that has opened. If the kids are taught, as well as the parents, the teachers, and the families are taught, we can do this. From safety protocols to curriculum, is this actually possible? We'll show it to you.